Assassin's Creed 2 is arguably one of the most loved games ever made, but it turns out the devs might be even bigger fans of Super Mario Bros. When Ezio makes his escape from Florence, he seeks the help of his uncle, and the introduction does not disappoint. Don't you recognize me? It's a me, Mario! When it comes to Hitman 3, the story can sometimes be dramatic, and that's why fans were never expecting this Easter egg. If you collect the bird eggs, went to the biker's hideout, and then threw them into a frying pan, the bike will become an escape route. I know it seems random, but this is a reference to the famous oh, bike scene from E.T. Oh. And one of the craziest misdirections I've ever seen is in Goat Simulator 3. Around the map, you could find a tape for a movie named Where the Heck is Steve? It's obviously a nod to Finding Nemo, which makes you want to watch it even more. I pop it in and things take a brutal turn. Meet Steve, a playful little fish, on his way of becoming sushi. The last place you'd expect to find references is in the Talos Principle, but it's actually hiding quite a few of them, and my favorite has to be when you jump down this cliff. Walk through the hidden cave, and as you turn the corner, you'll find Han Solo frozen in Carbonite. Single player games always have the best secrets, and Kingdom Come Deliverance hides theirs in ridiculous places. As you explore the map, you might stumble across an unmarked grave. Most of us would just walk past it, but if you're curious enough to hit it with your shovel and start digging up a body. Pretty underwhelming, it's just a skeleton. He's holding a broom and has a red cape, but that could mean anything until you look at his hand revealing the golden snitch from Harry Potter. Yeah, this is a Quidditch player who had a really bad day. But then we have Sirius Sam, which is the first place you would expect to find some secrets. So playing Siberian Mayhem, most people would see an outhouse and a swamp and immediately think, yeah, that's totally a Shrek reference. But if you wanted actual confirmation, just look at the back where it says, um. I mean, you get it. Over in Payday 2, they love messing around with hidden items like the parody of Ash from Pokemon. But something just as ridiculous as the Psycho Knife, which is made by Norman B and Chucky. Any horror fan will know these guys. Norman Bates is from Psycho and Chucky is, he's Chucky. But if that wasn't already obvious, just use the knife. Something even more obvious is in Goat Simulator 3. Once you leave the map in the Payday DLC, you'll find an entire biome inhabited by Rocket League cars. Yeah, you could join in and basically play an entire match with the other drivers. And more recently, Fortnite added an emote called Toasted Coconut. You basically crack it open, put a straw in there, and toast at the camera. If this was any other game, no one would look twice, but it's Fortnite, so obviously there's some kind of reference here. Compare it to the toast scene from Great Gatsby, and it is an exact replica. They even added fireworks in the background of one of the trailers. Something more on the nose is Maneater. Basically, this game lets you play as a shark and you just gotta go around eating people. Pretty fun, but you're so distracted by your killing spree that it's easy to miss a secret on the ocean floor. Dive all the way down and you could find SpongeBob's house. But there is an unbelievably small Easter egg in Dying Light. Most of the secrets in this game are pretty obvious, so I'm shocked that people found this one. In the pit mission, you'll explore a huge headquarters, but on one of the desks, there's a pencil covered in blood. Feels like a random detail and it's so easy to walk past it, but this is a reference to the Dark Knight, where Joker makes his pencil disappear. I'm gonna make this pencil disappear. Back in Cyberpunk, one of their most obvious tributes is in the Night City's PD Laboratory. Right there on the shelf is a BB unit from Death Stranding. This ain't even a parody, it's just there. This wouldn't be a references video if we didn't talk about Just Cause 3, because there's more Easter eggs in this game than actual content. But one of the most underrated is when you visit Rainio. On top of this building, two NPCs are looking over the balcony, one of them wearing this dress, and the other with a black and blue one. If you get it, you get it, but this is actually an homage to the dress that broke the internet a few years back, with everybody seeing in like two different colors. From the most famous dress in the world to the most iconic movie scene in history, if you explore the misty swamps of Fallout 4, you'll eventually find two skeletons on a wooden door. Yeah, of course this is the ending of Titanic where Rose and Jack are stranded in the ocean. But you're probably surprised I haven't talked about GTA 5 yet, and don't worry, I was getting to it. Yeah, this whole game is made of references to pop culture, but one of my favorites is at the bottom of the ocean. Once you scuba dive all the way down here, you'll find the hatch from Lost that most people assume it ends here, but that is a total misdirection. If you listen closely, someone is banging on the window from inside. 
Now, some players wondered if this was Morse code and translated it, only for the knocking to say, hey, you never call, how'd you fancy going bowling? Now, of course, if you played GTA 4, it's a nod to Roman Bellic and how he'd always ask you to go bowling no matter what. You couldn't escape the phone calls, and I guess being 100 feet underwater, it still doesn't protect you. Now, let's talk about Spider-Man PS4, because if there's one game that delivers on fan service, it is this one. But there is one Easter egg that nobody talks about. If you go to the Trinity Church and look at the clock tower, the hands are stuck at 1.21 p.m. This is a subtle nod to Gwen Stacy's death scene from The Amazing Spider-Man, where she falls off a tower in the film, and the clock also gets frozen at 1.21 p.m. And in the comics, Gwen dies in issue 121, so it's all connected. And while that was insanely easy to miss, Borderlands 2 doesn't care about being subtle. On your way to the Highlands, you can find a double rainbow projected in the distance. Pretty cool, I guess, but Handsome Jack is super excited. Oh, oh, oh perfect double rainbow. Yeah, it's a perfect tribute to the Double Rainbow video from 13 years ago. Double Rainbow, oh my god. It's a double rainbow all the way. Something a little more modern is in World War Z Horde mode. In the New York level, you can stumble across a shipping container with a radioactive vault door, a dead guy in a blue jumpsuit, and bottles of soda lying around. Of course, they're referencing Fallout, which is known for its vaults, jumpsuits, and Nuka Cola. Moving on to Elden Ring, this doesn't have a ton of Easter eggs, but when you find them, they're amazing. If you manage to kill Blythe, you'll earn his armor set and a royal greatsword. But before you equip his chest armor, read the description which says, Blythe was the blade of Ronnie, but the cold bothered him anyway. So yeah, it looks like one of the developers is a bit big fan of Frozen. Not exactly subtle, but this NPC from Cyberpunk 2077 went over everyone's head. During the Big in Japan mission, there's a surgeon who says, One day, Tiger Crow boss needs surgery, but both die on table. But there is secret. I killed Tiger Crow boss on purpose. If this guy is way too familiar, it's a reference to Hyde from The Office, a surgeon who killed the Yakuza boss and fled to America. My big secret, I killed Yakuza boss on purpose. Another game that references iconic franchises is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. If you head to this small island, you'll realize no one's here. But as you walk to the edge of the cliff, there's a circle of rocks on the ground. In the middle, one of them has a leaf face and two arms. Yep, it's a core from Zelda, then the rock circle's a nice touch. But you gotta appreciate the subtle movie reference in Crisis Warhead. As you walk through a frozen tunnel, there's a way to circle back and climb the upper levels. And here you'll spot a squirrel in the ice with an acorn. If any of you grew up watching Ice Age, this will be pretty familiar. It's a tribute to Scrat from the movie Movies, who was infamous for collecting acorns and putting his life in danger with every single attempt. Unfortunate news, looks like it ran out of luck this time. Now look, I gotta bring up Cyberpunk again because they are killing it with the Easter eggs. In the desert outside of Night City, there's a random underground bunker that you can walk straight into. Good amount of loot in here, but if you look at the bodies on the ground, they've died in a pretty strange way. Once you watch 10 Cloverfield Lane and see what happens to Howard, it all makes sense. Now a game you likely haven't heard of is Pseudo Cats. It's an indie game where you play Sudoku with a bunch of cats. I mean, you probably could have guessed that from the the name, but it takes place on apartment buildings in a city. And guess what? There is a chance you can look at one of those windows and spot a familiar face. In her full glory, it's the lo-fi girl studying for a test. Clearly, indie games have some underrated Easter eggs, like Five Nights at Freddy's. Obviously, it's mainstream now, but at the beginning, this was just a horror parody of Chuck E. Cheese. So to pay homage to the franchise's origins and diss the restaurant at the same time, Security Breach has an amazing reference. You can find a customer complaint that says, the pizza we ordered was weird. Some pieces were different sizes or didn't fit together, did you recycle the old pizza from the trash? Weird comment to make, but it's based on real conspiracy theories about Chuck E. Cheese. They claim they put their slices together and they didn't line up, causing the old recycled pizza theory to be born. And now we have a FNAF movie coming out. This game has come a long way. So to pay tribute to the community that made it successful, look in the background of the trailer. You could just make out FNAF YouTubers on the Employee of the Month board, including Daco, 8-Bit Ryan, Fusion Z Gamer, and more. But of course, most of the spotlight was taken by Corey Kenshin, who has an entire cameo role as a cab driver. Why do I always get the weirdos? You want to be Employee of the Month? Play Viscera Cleanup Detail, because you spend hours being the best janitor in the world. In the Robot Factory level, you walk into the bathroom to clean it and can dig out a case from the toilet. Inside is a red pill and a blue pill. Yep, it's the infamous choice from the Matrix, and it looks like someone at the Robot Factory chose to flush it instead. Those are 25 secret references in video games. It's been Tommy, and keep it here on T5G.